Hello friends, welcome to a new 3DS Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from CGK.com. In the next lesson, not, not this lesson, uh, I want to show you how to model this sofa, uh, but I br brought this out uh, anyways. I wanted to show this to you because I want to, in this lesson, I want to show you the cloth modifier and how we can create these organic looking uh, shapes very fast. By the way, these models will be the, uh, we, we will also use these models, the ones we create uh, in the and exercise we, we are going to create a uh, simple interior model and also i'm going to show you how to render that as well uh, but uh, for now let's just keep creating these models and uh, we are going to save them and store them uh, somewhere in our library i want to i want to show you how to um, create a logic to create a library as well and then uh, i'm going to uh, use all these models we have created and i'm going to show you how to import them to our uh, to a new scene and uh, render them uh, in that scene but first for uh, this in this lesson let's go over the cloth modifier so let's start a new uh, max file now uh, how cloth modifier works is uh, it simulates a cloth uh, with vertices uh, you are you are, have created so uh, the resolution of your mesh the um, count of your polygons or vertices in your mesh uh, is very important uh, for using uh, cloth modifier. Hence, the uh, I wanted to show you, uh, because of that, I wanted to show you uh, the cloth modifier after turbo smooth because turbo smooth is a great way to increase the polygon count, uh, increase the resolution of the mesh uh, in 3ds Max. So let's start with a box. Uh, let's uh, first uh, create a simple pillow. Uh, first thing is I want to create a box, and then I'm going to increase uh, the segments to 10 by 10 by 3 even four maybe and we have this kind of a box and when you add a turbo smooth on top you will see that it uh, instantly increases the polygon count of the object now this if we, if we hit f4 this doesn't look like an organic model because we don't have the, those uh, uh, creases or uh, those fabric like looking uh, on the surface the surfaces are very flat as you can see uh, in the past lessons, we have talked about soft selection and freeform tools to play with this model. But I want to show you the cloth modifier as well. And this is not the only use. I'm going to show you how to create some different uh, type of things in this lesson as well. Uh, like a curtain-like thing. Or not exactly a curtain, but a blanket type of thing. Uh, but for now, let's just uh, stick with this. Uh, there are a lot of advanced uses for cloth modifier. We, we are going to see that in the upcoming lessons in the interior scene. We are going to create curtains, realistic curtains. And we will use very advanced uh, stuff in cl the cloth modifier. But for this lesson, I'm going to show you two basic things uh, or two basic ways to um, use it. Now, the first thing is uh, I want to the first thing I want to do is I want to select this uh, box. I want to add an edit poly on top because I want these uh, turbo smooth meshes to be backed uh, into an edit poly then i'm going to add a cloth modifier on top uh, as you can see this is just a modifier and the, the, there are a lot of uh, parameters in here don't worry don't be scared i'm going to show you how to uh, use this in a straight uh, way and you will be able to use this way in every uh, scene or every time you use a cloth modifier now uh, what cloth uh, modifier does is it tries to simulate a cloth with vertices as I told you so the resolution is important uh, you need to have a dense mesh uh, for to use this uh, this is not even a very dense mesh uh, le uh, you can just increase the turbo smooth and we will see uh, how it behaves when we increase it uh, even more now first thing I want to sh uh, show you is the object properties button if you click on this the a whole new panel uh, comes up pops up and in here you have uh, the objects uh, you have set as uh, cloth objects or you have uh, applied cloth modifier to. Uh, right now we only have one object that is uh, applied uh, that we apl apply the cloth modifier which is box one. And I want to select this and I want this to behave as a cloth. So I'm going to select cloth uh, on the side menu. Here you can, uh, the, again, there are a lot of properties, but you don't need to play with them. There are presets. Maybe you will be happy with these. I, I'm, you, I usually use these presets. These will help the mesh um, behave in a way that a certain fabric behaves, like a cotton, for example, a cashmere or a silk, for example. Let's choose cotton for now. 
and hit OK. Now, uh, if we just right away hit simulate, you will see that this uh, cloth will fall off because it has gravity. But let me hit cancel. Uh, also, you can see that the timeline uh, is move, was moving forward, so you can just bring this back or uh, forward with this timeline. But if you hit Z and zoom into the model, you'll see that it instantly had this cloth-like uh, shape. Okay. Let's uh, erase simulation. That way we can just undo what we did. Right now, I don't want any gravity on my model. So, uh, it won't fall off, but it will just uh, stay in its place and just have this uh, fabric-like uh, shape. Again, I'm going to right-click uh, here. Uh, I will e disable the gravity. It was minus 980. Uh, I, I'm uh, going to right-click on the spinners to zero that value. Uh, sorry. Yeah, if you hit simulate again, whatever, uh, you will see that right away we have this more organic shape of a model and it looks instantly more like a pillow, uh, as you can see, okay? And more like a fabric. Maybe you can leave it here uh, because it, I want it to have more structure. Uh, this looks more blobby and this, this uh, here, it looks more uh, structured, I guess. It looks uh, more like a strong pillow, I guess. And this is the first method uh, I want to show you. Actually, the uh, sofa I've shown you in the uh, previous example uh, was solely modeled with this. Uh, I, I did some adjustments, of course, but in the cloth modifier, I only used uh, this technique in here. Uh, a second thing we can do is let's erase the simulation again. And we can add a floor to this. And if we add a plane, Let's move this pillow up a little bit. Uh, they shouldn't be intersecting uh, while using cloth modifier. Okay, after you create uh, create this uh, ground plane, I'm going to go back to my pillow. Uh, this time I want I want this pillow to be affected by the gravity, so I'm going to just choose Earth in here. It will set the default gravity back. And uh, I'm going to click on the object properties again. And this time I want to add objects. And I want to add the plane here. And you can see that uh, the uh, simulation will uh, both have box and the plane. Uh, and I want to set the box as a cloth and the plane as a collision object. This way, the pillow will fall down and collide with the plane, uh, the ground plane. And uh, you, will, you will see that the it will take a shape uh, accordingly. And if I hit OK now and go to simulate, yeah, you can see that it fell down, it uh, landed on the plane, and um, because it doesn't have anything inside uh, or any volume or anything, uh, it just bent inwards uh, as a cloth would do. Uh, try to think of this as an um, empty pillow, right? So let's erase this again, and how? Uh, let's talk about how we can fix that. I'm going to go to the object uh, properties. I'm going to select the box again. In here, we have a value called pressure internal pr pressure, which will help us simulate a pillow because uh, the pillow has uh, this internal pressure uh, because of the objects inside. So let's uh, increase this to four, for example, and then simulate again. I guess four is not good enough. Let's erase this, go to object properties and choose the box and increase this to 10. Yeah, uh, as we increase that, you can see that it uh, deflates uh, less and less. Let's increase that one more time. Go to the object properties, choose box. Let's set 50, simulate again. And you will right away see that 50 is a little bit too much, but you will right away see that we have this cloth-like behavior. Sometimes the uh, vertices go um, a little bit weird. Uh, it, they go inwards uh, into the plane, but don't worry about this because we can always add an edit poly and then just um, flatten the surface here because this will usually sit on somewhere so it won't be a problem that much you can we could fix these as well whatever for now let's uh, roll uh, with these values i'm going to erase this again and just try to make this even better let's drop this to 30 even 20 oh sorry Yeah, 
Now th this looks uh, a little bit better in my opinion. Uh, after this, you can add an ed other edit poly, and then you can go to freeform and play with the end result as well. You can just change the um, shape a little bit. You can give this a more uh, weird out look, for example, or whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, take a second look or a different approach to the uh, cloth modifier. Let's create uh, an, another object like a teapot, for example. The, this is for just demonstration purposes. So uh, let's just create a model that looks a little bit complicated. Let's turn these to gray. And this time I want to create a blanket type of uh, a, a cloth. I'm going to create a plane for this. I'm going to increase the segments to 100 by 100. Uh, by the way, if you increase these too much, then you will see that um, your computer will be uh, will have difficulties calculating the cloth. So uh, try to manage the uh, segments, not too much. But 100 and, uh, by 100 shouldn't be that much of a problem. But uh, for larger values, maybe uh, you need to be cautious. So we have a, uh, I, I've created a plane. I pulled it up and apply the cloth modifier. And let's go to the object properties and set this as a cloth. Uh, this time I'm not going to use pressure because I don't need it. I'm going to select uh, silk this time. Let's uh, see how that behaves. And uh, again, I'm going to add the teapot to the simulation. And I want to choose this as a collision object, set this as a collision object. Now, if I hit simulate, you will see that again, the uh, blanket falls and it will, when it interacts with the teapot, as you can see, it will behave as a cloth, which looks very cool. <laughs> Uh, uh, we forgot to uh, define the ground plane as a, a collision object as well. So let's delete this, uh, erase this simulation, go to object properties and add objects and use this as a collision object as well. Now, if I simulate again, you will see that it will both collide with the teapot and the ground plane. As you can see, this is very cool. Uh, we could even uh, throw a blanket on the sofa, I guess, right? With these uh, tools. And I really love this tool because it gives it gives very organic results right away. And you, it saves you a lot of trouble. Try, uh, try thinking uh, of uh, modeling something like this. It would be hideous. But with this, you can see that right away we have interesting, very interesting results. And they, it looks really cool as well. Okay. If you increase the count, it will be um, it will behave. Uh, let's decrease it and let me show you how that behaves with less meshes, and you will uh, understand what I'm saying. I'm going to add a new cloth modifier, add teapot and the plane, uh, set them to be collision objects, and plane to to be the cloth object. I'm going to hit OK and simulate again, and right there you will see that it behaves much worse because it only bend, it can only bend the mesh. Uh, from vertex, from edges, from segments. So uh, you need to increase the segments to get the better results. Okay, this is how cloth modifier works. In the next lesson, let's uh, model the sofa and uh, see this in action. Thanks for listening. I hope this was useful and fun for you. Uh, if this was useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.